Microsoft To-Do and Google Tasks are the homemade task managers provided by these tech powerhouses. And given that they come shipped with Windows and Google accounts, they're often a natural first choice for people when it comes to managing their to-dos. Whether you're just getting started with either one, whether you're currently using one of them and interested in seeing the alternative, or interested in moving over to one of them from another tool altogether, in this video, you will learn everything you need to know to make a decision. Unlike typical YouTube reviews, I'm not just going to read out the documentation by providing a feature list from A to Z. Instead, we're going to take a critical look at some of these apps through the lens of some key productivity principles. Number one being getting out of your head. How do these apps help us capture new input that comes our way? Number two, creating structure. How well can we organize everything in a way that makes sense to us? Number three, going from raw to tangible. Can we specify tasks in detail to ensure we only see them when we need to and when we can actually do them? Speaking of which, how do these apps support us when we're actually ready to engage with our tasks? And number five, maintaining productivity, which is all about comparing the user experience and features that'll keep you using either app productively long-term. Obviously, both apps have tasks functionality, meaning you can add items and check them off with a checkbox to mark them complete. Integrations with their respective ecosystems and email integrations to add those as tasks as well. Both have limited integrations with smartwatches and require workarounds to get them to work properly. On mobile, both apps have a quick add button and widgets for your home screen. Microsoft Do is significantly more advanced in that it has a standalone app while Google Tasks is integrated with the rest of Google Workspace like within the calendar and email. This means Microsoft To Do has additional ways to add new items like a keyboard shortcut and a quick add button. Both apps support creating separate lists so you can sort your tasks by their related project or focus area. Microsoft To Do takes this a couple steps further by allowing for folders as well as tags to create multiple angles to view your tasks through, such as by context or by how actionable they are. Microsoft To Do also comes shipped with some smart lists, like the time-bound smart list showing tasks based on their assigned due date. Since both of these apps are pure task managers, there's not as much ambiguity on what something you've captured may be. Unlike more advanced tools like Todoist, TickTick, or Asana, these two apps are there to, well, manage your tasks. Hence, it won't surprise you that both apps support checkbox functionality to mark an item complete, task descriptions for extra information. While you could use this as notes is a big stretch and a risk since you cannot remove the checkbox. So I'd recommend just using apps like OneNote or Google Keep for those instead. Time association. You can add due dates as well as routines for repetitive tasks in both apps. Subtasks. These can be useful if you want to manage projects and goals inside of these apps as well and mark milestones or specific checkpoints when progressing towards a desired outcome. Microsoft To Do does end up with a slight advantage over Google Tasks here, which is that it supports attachments like PDFs or images, which can be useful to elaborate on some tasks, which Google Tasks does not support at all. When it comes to actually doing things, this is where Microsoft To Do really starts to take off compared to Google Tasks. Both apps do support mobile widgets, which allow you to select a list and view to-dos directly from your phone's home screen, reducing friction, such as needing to open the app and finding the tasks first. However, that is pretty much where all similarities end. First up, filters. Microsoft To Do comes with a few built-in filters to easily pull up your to-dos for the day as well as any time in the future. In addition, by searching for specific tags, you can pull up any task that contains them, which is helpful if you organize your tasks by context, for example. Now, it certainly isn't anywhere near more advanced to-do apps since you have to perform the search every time and you're not able to save it either. But Google Tasks has none of that functionality in the first place. No today view, 
no filters, and no reminders either, which Microsoft To Do does have. You can set up prompts on any task which are separate from that task's due date, giving you flexibility and enabling you to separate a due time from a start time, for example. It's also important to consider how well an app can help you maintain a high level of productivity long term. Switching productivity apps is a tedious process that most of the time just distracts from productivity rather than contributing to it. So let's try and avoid it. Both apps have a completed tasks view, enabling you to review on what you've done. Both apps also have a mobile app to ensure you're not dependent on one device to actually see what needs to be done. Although that's not actually completely true. Shockingly, Google Tasks has no dedicated desktop app or even a web view, which Microsoft To Do does have. Thankfully, Google Tasks does have some third party applications which allow you to see your tasks from your computer. But judging the apps purely by how they're shipped, this is a serious limit. Limitation. Instead, you'll see Google Tasks spread around the Google ecosystem, such as inside your calendar or next to emails. Lastly, Microsoft To Do has a better design, in my opinion, which you can also customize with themes. Google Tasks does not allow you to do this. If you've watched this entire comparison review so far, it won't be a surprise to you that, in my opinion, Microsoft To Do wins in comparison to Google Tasks. It has an edge over Google Tasks in virtually every department. It seems to have a more thought out user experience. And with some hacks, it can even work well for power users. And if you're interested in what I mean with that, I have a full video on Microsoft to do that I'll link in the description for you to check out. Here's a more important takeaway though. In my opinion, both of these apps suck. I've based this review around comparing features that either one or both do have. However, there are many, many features that neither one supports that, in my opinion, make them severely lacking compared to what's out there. For example, neither app supports links to specific lists or tasks, which can be very useful to map relations between items within the app or to navigate to an item in the app from another outside source. Neither app supports nested lists with full list functionality, no matter which level on the hierarchy. Now, Microsoft To Do does support first level folders, which helps a little bit, but apps like Todoist support full list functionality, no matter which level on the hierarchy you're on, which can be very useful for organizing in more detail with more sophistication for example, by area of focus first, and then individual projects related to that area second. Neither app supports sequential projects. Each task is treated the same within a project list. And that can be forgiven if there was something like a Kanban view, which neither app has as well. So you cannot easily visualize progress within a certain project. Neither app supports safe searches or filters where you could combine specific tags, filter for specific list membership, etc. Either app supports templates for either tasks or projects. Now in Microsoft To Do, you can actually create a separate templates folder where you then add lists that you treat as templates, but they are still treated the same as regular lists. Any task that is supposed to be part of a template will show up in things like the all tasks view, for example. Neither app has reviewing functionality like advanced task logs. And lastly, neither app supports natural language where you can automatically type in things like a date and it will convert into the associated due date for a task. Instead, you have to manually click through a menu every single time. Now, of course, you can use these apps, especially if you're just looking for a simple task manager solution. They are free. However, I would also want to invite you to discover the lots of exciting alternatives that are out there on the market. I have a playlist where I've reviewed dozens of specialized to-do apps for you to check out. And I promise you, you will find something you love in there.